Well, let's take a look at this parseMe MIDI file. I'm using the XVI32 hex editor or hexadecimal editor. Before I actually open up the parseMe file, let me show you how this works on a standard text file. You'll notice that we have the individual bytes listed in hexadecimal format in the central panel. The ASCII interpretation shows up on the right panel. And of course the cursor highlights the same byte and we're just looking at two different representations. At the back end we have some non-printing characters like carriage return. This is actually an editor so you can change say a, a value on the ASCII display panel and you see the corresponding byte change. For example watch that 63. Also, we can change the value in hexadecimal and see the corresponding change over here. So again, these are just two different viewpoints on the exact same byte value. Let's go ahead and open up the MIDI file now. And it's a binary file, so especially when we look at the C of byte values here, it doesn't seem like there's much to be seen except uh, noise. If we start looking at the ASCII side, sometimes you recognize little snippets of text. And uh, especially if you've been looking at the details on standard MIDI files, you recognize the chunk header is MTHD that says this is a header chunk. And the next four values are the header chunk size. It's a 32-bit value, and so this is in Big Indian format, or Motorola format, and the uh, default for you is likely to be Intel format, or Little Indian, so make sure you set the appropriate uh, interpretation there. And that's a nice way of being able to decode a collection of bytes in a meaningful way. The header would have various other 2-byte fields. And specifically, this is the division field that we're looking at, or ticks per quarter note. So we're interpreting that as a decimal value here. We find that that's 192. Now we see the beginning of a track with the MTRK. Again, the next four bytes corresponds to the track length. We decode that number and it says there ought to be 97 bytes following the track length. And uh, I won't go through and count every one of these bytes for you, but if you did, you'd find that you end up right here, which in fact would be just before the next track starts up. And again, you can recognize the MTRK showing up in the ASCII side. Here's another one. Yeah, let's go back up where we were. The very first thing in a track is always a delta time. This particular delta time has value zero. Now we're seeing something that has its most significant bit set. So this is either a meta, meta event or a MIDI message. F0 is actually the system exclusive MIDI message, which terminates with F7 back to a delta time. Now we have a controller change on channel one with the, with the two data values being, being both zero. Here's another delta time. Here we have program change on channel one with value 69 hexadecimal, another delta time. FF always means a meta event the type, in this case 7F, indicates sequencer specific. And if we were to decode 14 hex, that says the length of this meta event is 20 bytes. So I'll count off 20 real quick. That's the end of the meta event. There's a delta time again. Here's another meta event. Again, I'll let you look up the type on that one. It's three bytes long, so I'll count off three bytes. Here's another delta time, another meta event of some different flavor. 
five bytes in length. Delta time again, since its most significant bit is set, that tells us that we need one more byte for the delta time. So the delta time is actually two bytes long. Uh, here's a MIDI message, that's a note on event. Here's a delta time. And here is a note off event. If you compare the note number, 43 hex, that was turning off the note that had just been turned on.